to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 645, 75 years of punch noses. <laughs> Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out a special section we have over there right now, the Maggie Peterson Collection. That's right, Maggie Peterson, Charlene herself. We have photographs from her and other items that are signed by her, and we're all being used to uh, to just raise money to help Maggie out. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. While you're over there, you might want to check out some of the Weavers shirts, Weavers shirts, Weavers hats. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you and me. Uh, fans of the Andy Griffith Show. These folks are the executive producers are Rainy and Jennifer Vinson. They're the executive producers for episode number 645. Thank you guys. And thank you for being here with me as well. It's always great to spend time in Mayberry, no matter how you do it. But every week we get an opportunity here on the podcast to spend time talking about the Andy Griffith Show and visiting with one another and just hopefully everybody having a good time. At least that's the goal. That's the hope. So this week we're going to be talking about, like I said, 75 years of punched noses. <laughs> and I'll tell you about that a little bit uh, more as we go. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about Maggie and explain to you what her collection is for and encourage you to go out there and purchase those items. And then we're going to hear from uh, Randy Turner with This Week in Mayberry History, we'll throw in some trivia in there if we have an opportunity. This is going to possibly be a long one. It depends on how much I talk. So let's get started. Let's get started here. So 75 years ago, that's right, on August the 9th, 1945, that is a day that shall always live in infamy in Mayberry. That's right. <laughs> It was on that day, back in 1945, August the 9th, which as I record this, that is what day it is, 75 years ago. That was 75 years ago is when the case of the punch in the nose actually occurred. That's right. When Foley was punched in the nose by Floyd. (laughs) Can't you just see it? It's just a little poop. According to Charlie, at least at the beginning of that episode, that was his thinking. But as the episode went along, he he was uh, not quite so generous with his thoughts. So uh, this was actually pointed out this morning. I saw it, and I'll give credit where credit's due to Keith Brown. He was the first one I saw post about it. According to Season 5, Episode number 25, The Case of the Punch in the Nose, uh, we were all led in on uh, details of a very cold case that Barney felt obligated to officially disperse of, <laughs> causing chaos along the way, uh, in a, which it allegedly took place. Uh, did I say 45? It's 46. August 9th, 1946 is when it actually happened. Yeah, 45. It was 75 years ago. It was 1946. So 75 years ago. Uh, and I keep I keep saying five, but it's seventy is forty six. Seventy five years ago, it took place on this here day, right here as we speak about it. So I wanted to tell you a little bit. There's a book that you can get at Weavers. It's called the the Definitive Andy Griffith Show Reference. It's a great book, and uh, I just wanted to read you a few of the things that actually happened in that particular episode because we've got there's a lot of information now. You guys. The folks that are listening to this podcast, I'm pretty sure you guys all know these episodes. Of course, this is this is when Floyd actually punched Foley in the nose. We never saw him, but we assume he did. It occurred at 11.25 a.m. on August 9th, 1946. The two people involved were Floyd Lawson, uh, Mayberry's then new barber, he was brand new, and grocer Charlie Foley. Andy tells Barney to forget all about it, but... It, the ever efficient deputy <laughs> in sense on uh, talking to the principals involved. Uh, Floyd doesn't remember the details, but Charlie tells Floyd that he had asked Floyd for a haircut and then fallen asleep in the chair uh, like he always does. And when he awoke, he discovered that Floyd had also given him a shave. When Floyd called Charlie a cheapskate for refusing to pay for the shave, Charlie uh, turned around and called Floyd a crook. 
One thing led to another until at last the mild-mannered Floyd Lawson punched Charlie Foley right in the nose. Right in the nose. When Floyd uh, hears Charlie's recollections, though, he wholeheartedly disagrees. <laughs> in an argument, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Charlie said, if Charlie told you that it's an out-and-out fib. <laughs> so, it's not fib. What's the word he uses? Anyway, that's that's basically what he said. Uh, so basically, Barney ends up reenacting the crime uh, with the actual people that were involved that day, including Goober, who was a mere lad, uh, five years old when the original uh, punch actually occurred. Uh, as Barney tries to piece together the puzzle, Floyd gets mad and punches Foley again in the nose. And of course, nobody saw it, right? Before you know it, everybody in Mayberry is arguing over the case and fighting with one another. So here's in chronological order. Here's what actually happened. So this is a good one, right? So this is what happened. Charlie Foley punches Goober in the nose, right? Otis Campbell punches Floyd in the nose uh, because, you know, because Otis, he's a distant relative of Foley. You know? Yeah, so he is. So then Goober punches Gilly Walker in the nose. <laughs> Opie's best friend, Johnny Ball, yeah, who is Charlie Foley's nephew, by the way, punches Opie in the nose. Lamar Tuttle, Floyd's cousin, he punches Opie in the no- uh, Otis in the nose. And finally, a lady named Betty Ann telephones Andy and claims that an unnamed assailant punched her in the nose. And by this time, Andy has had enough. <laughs> he severely scolds Barney for being uh, the instigator of the, all this mayhem and decides to bring in Fo- Floyd and Charlie together to solve the dilemma. First of all, Andy reminds Charlie and Fo- Floyd that they've been close friends for nearly 20 years, and next he has the two men shake hands. That's right. So Ch- Floyd and Charlie are suddenly reminded that in 1946, Sheriff uh, Poindexter solved the original dispute in much the same manner. Both men realizes how foolish that they have been, and they make up. When Barney starts to stir up the controversy again, the book says Floyd punched him in the nose. All we know is that he went, he's gone to the barbershop, and Andy jumps up. <laughs> Andy and Goober jump up and they start running over to the barber to the barber shop and you just see as they get outside the courthouse, there comes Barney holding his nose up in the air, holding on to it as he walks back into the courthouse. Oh, what a great scene. Oh, it's so good. All right, so here's uh, here's some episode notes. Otis Campbell was first arrested for drinking at 2 p.m. on September the 23rd, 1941. He was nabbed at the Mayberry Garden Club Flower Show. Uh, Since it was his first arrest, the sentence was suspended. Barney states that Otis uh, probably passed out on the poppies. (laughs) Andy and Barney hum when they're singing the hymn, Sinners Lose All Their Guilty Stains. That happens on this episode. All old police documents in the Mayberry are all in, in Mayberry are boxed up and kept in the basement of the Mayberry Firehouse. We find that out in this episode. Andy gets mad as, uh, at Barney for bringing up an old case, and in a rare fit of anger, he yells, "Shut up!" <laughs> to his startled deputy. Uh, also during this episode, Andy calls Barney a nut on two separate occasions. So, and <laughs> it was definitely true. He's a nut. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Aunt B prepares a poultice for Charlie Foley's injured nose. You remember, I ate some of that. It won't hurt you. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, let's see. Mayberryans Robert Bobby Gibble and Emma Larch announced their coming nuptials in the Mayberry Gazette. Yeah, had you to see it back in high school. Hey, Bobby dipping her pigtail in the ink. Oh, she get it with him now. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that was uh, Barbie Gribble wrote. Bobby Gribble hates him a large. And now they're not seeing their coming natural. Ain't life funny. <laughs> oh, now even funnier is in future episodes, Aunt B will have an elderly friend named Emma Larsh who is not married to Bobby Gribble. So there's a little triv- trivia for you guys. 
Uh, Bobby Gribble used to date Andrew Beasley's girl. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in the episode, Floyd's Barbershop charges the following prices. for uh, He charges $1.75 for haircuts. For flat tops, it's $2. Uh, a butch is $2. Shampoo is $0.75. Cents. A shave is 50, 50 cents. And Floyd charges a dollar or charges a quarter for using hair tonic. Okay, so there's a little bit of information about that episode. I just thought that was fun. There's a lot of cool stuff. Now, a lot of that, that information, and most of that was coming out of the book, uh, the definitive Andy Griffith Show reference. You can pick up a copy over at uh, Weaver's, and it's, it's definitely a great reference book, a great book uh, to look at. So, wow, can you believe it? 75 years, 75 years. Uh, and Andy finally sat down, Foley and Charlie, <laughs> and uh, got him to shake hands. Of course, Barney came back. Well, where's the paperwork? Where's the paperwork? <laughs> it's as open as it ever was. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, that's the remembrance there of the uh, case of a punch in the nose. Now, I should have told you that that episode was uh, it aired on the 15th of March, 1965. It's when that episode actually aired. It was written by Bill Edelson and Sam Brobrick and directed by Corby Ruskins. Now, you can find out all these kind of information if you go to Mayberry.info. There's a wiki there, the Mayberry Historical Society, and it has all kinds of information on there, and including some uh, odd facts known by a few related to that episode. It says, when Barney drives up in the squad car with a siren on, he drives in, the, in front of the barbershop. And it appears that Howard McNeil's stand-in is there rather than the actor himself. Hmm. Have to check that out. Uh, so when Goober said he was five years old, I was just five years old, and he said that on this particular episode, when the punch happened, that was 19 years before the episode. Uh, so that would mean he was 24 years old. But in Goober the Executive, he said he was 36, and that was only two years later. So... So there's some uh, there's some time discrepancies there on the show. So that kind of stuff is fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. But you can head over and find some of that information if you'd like to at Mayberry.info. There's there's an episode guides, characters list. There's Mayberry facts, FAQs. Uh, there's some trivia there. There's all kinds of, of fun stuff there. All right. So I wanted to tell you about uh, Maggie Peterson. So Maggie has got a collection over at Weaver's. Talked about that just a few minutes ago here. And uh, she basically she's, you know, we know who she is. She's known as Charlene Darling and love there. So Weavers is teaming up with Maggie and her family to bring you photographs and other items from her career. And we're hope that you'll find these treasured items that uh, bring the same joy to you that they've brought to Maggie over the years. Uh, Maggie wants to share the collection rather than leaving it in a trunk. Uh, she's not able to perform in person, uh, so this is a way that you can stay connected with her. Uh, she's currently residing in an assisted living facility, and since moving there, she's required additional care because of some chronic health uh, conditions, limited mobility, some restricted use of her arms, and these conditions have made it impossible for her to live independently. Uh, so uh, the level of care, you know, it increases the cost for Maggie, so... Uh, as a fan who loves Maggie and is certainly you know, has always considered her a star, like you know, we all do, uh, you might wonder about residuals from the Andy Griffith Show. Well, there weren't any, basically. The Andy Griffith Show ended in the late 60s, and that was before residuals became what they are now. Uh, they were paid only for the first showing and then three re-airings of the episode. Uh, so basically, that's it. All these years, all these many years, she, she has not received any residuals for more than 50 years. So please look through her collection. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com, and there is a link right at the top of the page over in the, in the left-hand side. Or if you're on a phone, you click on Categories, and you'll see it right there. And you can go down to Maggie's and look at all her collection. She's got lots of pictures. Uh, a lot of the pictures that are in here, there's only one of and some, there's multiples, but uh, there's only one of several of them. And once they're gone, they'll be gone. There's no more. 
definitely great looking photos. I love them. Uh, yeah, definitely something you'll, I think you would treasure. They're autographed. There are very few that are not. Some are autographed on the back of the photo and some are on the front, but it's clearly described in the description of the photo. So it, she may have signed it on the back of the photo because it was a nice looking picture and she didn't want to sign it on the front. <laughs> There's also some uh, scripts from the Andy Griffith Show. There's, or not from the Andy Griffith Show, sorry. They're not from the Andy Griffith Show. There are scripts for Maggie, but they're not from the Andy Griffith Show. There are scripts from uh, movies that she was involved in as a location uh, scout, a location coordinator. Uh, as she was involved in those. So there's some scripts like that. If you like them, they're all signed. They're autographed. They're, they're, they're autographed by her, but they're, uh, they, and it clearly will tell you if they are, or are they not or not. So definitely uh, check them out. Go over there and check it out. There's a t-shirt on there. That's Maggie and Andy hugging. That was something that she sold or received or something. Not sure where they came from exactly, but she had them and there's, they're all XLs. There are no other sizes. So go and check it out. Head over and check that out. And you'll be doing her a, a, a big favor. Plus, you'll be able to support her as you do it and you get some fun for it. And if you don't if you don't want to do that or if you want to do additional in some way, don't forget that she has a GoFundMe campaign where you can go and uh, donate toward her uh, toward helping her out because she could use it. And, uh, and that would make you feel good too. Right. And there's a link at Weavers. If you look in that, there's a link there for the GoFundMe page and you'll be able to get there. Plus there's a link at the show notes for this episode of the podcast and every episode this year, 2021, there has been a link. So go and check that out and be sure and tell Maggie, Hey, if you get an opportunity, so this is great. So, uh, uh, if you'd like to send cards or anything like that to Maggie to wish her well, feel free to mail them to Weavers, Weavers Department Store. And if you go to if you go to the Weavers Department Store website and go down to the bottom of the website, I'm gonna uh, the people that are on the video they'll be able to see it down toward the bottom where you see like that we accept credit cards and things like that. There is a the the web the mailing address is right there on the site and you can send it and send a, a card or whatever to that address and we will make sure it gets to Maggie. Okay. So if you'd like to do that, we'll make sure. All right. So that's, uh, I think that's it for that. So let me see here. I think we got a time for just a few trivia questions. Uh, if everybody is ready for that. So we'll do a few and uh, let me get us some trivia music because we, we need the trivia music to do this. There we go. Everybody ready? Get your pencils. Well, let's play some Mayberry trivia. All right. I think I think I did that last week. Let me get another one. All right. Uh, Mayor Stoner. This is a true or false question. Mayor Stoner got drunk in the courthouse. Mayor Stoner got drunk in the courthouse. All right. The answer, this is true or false. It's just true or false. You got a 50-50 chance on this one. The answer is true. The answer is true. Mayor Stoner got, uh, someone needs to clean this crock. All right. The uh, question number two. Who spiked the jailhouse water? Who, who spiked the water in the jailhouse cooler? Who, who spiked it? Okay. Who spiked the gel water cooler? The gel water cooler. If I read that better, it sounds better. Who spiked the water? Somebody needs to clean that crock. That's all I know. All right. The answer is it was Otis. Oh, you should have been able to guess that one too. All right. So here's a third question, all related. So if you didn't know those first two, you're going to have a hard time probably. What happened to Mayor Stoner when the governor came? <laughs> Could I made that one easier? What happened to Mayor Stoner when the governor came? What happened to Mayor Stoner when the governor came? <laughs> oh, bless his heart. All right. So what happened to Mayor Stoner when the governor came? The answer is he got drunk. <laughs> he got smashed. Drunk. That's right. All right, so he got stuck. Okay. 
Next question. This is going to be a true or false. Are you ready? True or false. This is number four. Oh, come on. <laughs> Here we go. True or false. Floyd wore glasses. <laughs> come on. Is this even a trivia question? True or false. Floyd wore glasses. He, Floyd, he wore glasses or he didn't. <laughs> that's, that's not even a, tr if, if you can't get this, please go back to episode one of this podcast and start over. <laughs> the answer is true. Of course. Yes. He wore glasses. Floyd wore glasses. Uh, you know, of course he did. All right. That was a hard one. All right. Number five. How many windows were there in the courthouse? Excluding the ones in the jail cells. Okay. How many windows were there in the courthouse excluding the ones in each cell? Oh, this is a math problem. How many windows were there in the courthouse excluding the ones in each cell? This one takes a little thinking. Folks in the chat room are already getting it right. The answer is there were three. Okay, so there were three. Thinking about it. So there were... There was one on each side of the main doors when you came in, right? There was one on each side. Plus, there was one on the side wall kind of behind Andy's desk, you know, just to the left of Andy's desk, right? So there were three. Three. Good, good job, guys, for getting that one. All right, our final question. What was this? This would be six. Number six. What were Goober's two known last names? What were the two last names that were given for Gomer during the, not Gomer, Goober, given for Goober uh, during the Andy Griffith Show? What were Goober's two known last names? Okay, this is a little harder. Got to get them both. What were Goober's two known last names? The answer, obviously Pyle. That's easy, Goober Pyle, because he's Gomer's cousin. But the other one was Goober Beasley. Goober Beasley. So Be Pyle and Beasley or Beasley and Pyle. Either direction. You got them both. You're in good shape. All right, guys. That's six questions. Six questions. How did you do? There's the, that's the real questions. How did you do? Did you do good or did you not? You know, that. <laughs> hopefully those were fun. And if you missed the one about Floyd's glasses, I am extremely disappointed. And you need to watch the podcast. And because I wear glasses. <laughs> All right, guys. And now we are back in a treat. We, Randy Turner, we've been playing reruns of his This Week in Mayberry History for a couple of weeks. And we have got a special one tonight. So uh, Randy's back. And so let's go and hear some of his wonderful information. <laughs> Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Some of you know that I started a club for Andy Griffith Show fans called the Andy Griffith Show Ambassadors Program. Members in good standing receive a small format magazine filled with Mayberry items of interest. A couple of issues ago, there was an article that I want to share information from to at least put out into the world one more piece of correct material about a vexing mistake. In the first season episode, A Feud is a Feud, in a take on the story of Romeo and Juliet, two young people want to marry, but are unable to do so as their families have been involved in a feud for decades. In that episode, the attractive Hannah Carter is credited as being played by Tammy Windsor. If one looks for information about the actress, more often than not, one will find articles that state Tammy Windsor was the stage name of Karen Cupsonet. Tragically, the beautiful young woman was murdered on Thanksgiving Day in 1963, shortly after President Kennedy was assassinated, which has fueled the inevitable conspiracy theories about Karen's death. When I first looked into this a few years ago, it was already clear there was an active internet dispute about whether Tammy Windsor was actually Karen Cupsonet. 
Certainly, the vast majority of sources indicated it was, in fact, the same actress using a stage name. At some point, an author who was writing a book about Karen, along with Karen's niece, both said that the Internet Movie Database and other sources are incorrect and that Tammy Windsor was not the stage name of Karen, but of a different person. Unfortunately, it was hard to accept any of those statements as authoritative if one looked more closely into their claims. The niece of Karen, who was participating in the book, had never actually met her aunt. Add to that that the planned book had a supernatural element to it, including claims that the niece had dreams with scenes seemingly from Karen's life rather than her own. So the misinformation continued. Enter a Mayberry fan and Mayberry in the Midwest trivia champion, Janet Anderson. Janet wrote a wonderful article for the spring 2021 issue of the Andy Griffith Show Ambassadors magazine about what she was able to, finally, authoritatively determine about this confusing issue. Part of the controversy about whether the actress Tammy Windsor was the same person as Karen Cupsonet had been actively discussed on the Who's Been Messing Up the Bulletin Board chapter of the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club back in 2008. The photos of Karen looked somewhat like Tammy Windsor in A Feud is a Feud, but Janin noted some differences that made her doubt they were really the same person. Janet investigated and eventually wrote and connected with the author mentioned earlier who was working with Karen's niece on the book. As noted, he indicated Karen did not use the stage name Tammy Windsor and that the actress seen in The Andy Griffith Show was a different person. The question then was whether to believe it, considering the supernatural aspects noted earlier, and even if one could get past that, then who was the actress in A Feud is a Feud? Thankfully, Janet was able to get to the bottom of it. As it turned out, the actress who played Hannah Carter is named Sandra DeBear, and Sandra is very much alive. She used the stage name Tammy Windsor early in her career, including in her appearance in The Andy Griffith Show, which she believed was her first TV role. Sandra did not act extensively before joining and touring with the musical comedy group. She later did some commercials and nightclub work and then became a casting director. Sandra only became aware of the internet misinformation when her neighbors looked up her acting career and discovered that sources consistently stated that Tammy Windsor was the stage name of the murdered Karen Cupsonet. When someone later brought Janet's posts about the matter in the Who's Been Messing Up the Bulletin Board chat room to Sandra's attention, Sandra was able to email Janet directly. She and Janet corresponded several times, eventually leading to Janet writing the aforementioned article. As a coda to the story, Jackie Joseph, who played Ernest T. Bass's Sweet Romina, had also worked with Sandra, also known as Tammy Windsor, on the low-budget Roger Corman film Little Shop of Horrors. Understandably, Jackie only knew the actress as Tammy, but recalls knowing that she eventually went on to become a casting director for TV commercials, which is pretty hard to do if one has been murdered at a young age. As Paul Harvey used to say, now we know the rest of the story. Thanks to Mayberry fan Janet Anderson. And that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take care of yourselves, take care of one another, and take Andy's advice, and go out there and act like somebody. Wow, great information from Randy Turner and Janet Anderson. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of the great stuff that Randy digs up, head over to turnersgrade at gmail.com and email him, and he'll make sure you don't miss anything, turnersgrade at gmail.com. Janet, great job on doing that. Uh, I remember reading all that stuff back in the Digest uh, years ago. There's a there's an archive version of the uh, all the information that she found, 
and I'll put a link in our show notes and you can go read it. Uh, when you go and look at the link I, see, I post, it doesn't list them af- uh, alphabetically. It doesn't list them in uh, time order. So you have to kind of look through them to make sure. Yeah, Janet, what did I say? You spelled it wrong. Oh, so it's, uh, it, you know, she's saying I spelled it wrong in the chat room. Well, nobody in the podcast can see that, so... <laughs> <laughs> my wife's interrupted anyway so she's got her stuff on the uh on the thing on the digest there and she can and she can uh uh you can you can put it in the right order sorry I, i'm getting i'm getting distracted by the co co-host uh, staff here <laughs> so she's complaining because i spelled janet wrong and uh, I spelled it in the chat room wrong. So, yeah, it's because it's Jan's name is Janet. And I can't spell it right. <laughs> That's why I call her Jan. Anyway, so uh, go and check that out because it's great stuff that Janet did. She did a great job uh, coming up with this information and running this all down. And it really is amazing that she was able to pull all that off. And uh, it was uh, it was a great, great bit of a detective work. And she is most certainly a trained noticer. And so she gets a trained noticer badge uh, that she can wear proudly. So, but uh, again, Randy, thanks for bringing that up. And folks, I hope you have enjoyed the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed uh, just uh, being here and spending some time in Mayberry. And I really hope that you'll consider heading over to Weavers and check out the stuff that uh, Maggie's got there. All the proceeds from that will go to Maggie. So uh, Weavers is not taking anything except uh uh, whatever credit card fees there are, we'll take that out and everything else will go to Maggie. So you'll be completely supporting her. All right. So I would love to hear from you. What'd you think about the podcast? Did you enjoy it? Uh, what about Randy's report and Janet's detective work? Man, it's like Sherlock Holmes is right here among us. Uh, so I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. Or you can just drop by twochairsnowaiting.com and tell us what you think. Let us know. So I would love to hear from you. And we'll be right here in Mayberry in the coming weeks. We've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. The Mayberry Effect is about to be released the end of August of 2021. And then the Mayberry Man movie right after that. Folks, it's, it's a big fall coming up for Mayberry. And we'll see you all then. Good night, everybody. <laughs>